for the double 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 star. I'm not sure when it was starting or not. The audio. So look, I've got some videos stacked over here that um, that I I can load up. Some of these videos, if I post them now, they'll be you know <laughs> ten steps backwards, if you will. With that said, I did have a, a comment or or two state that uh well one specifically state that uh they didn't like my erratic basically I'm using the word erratic um, loading of the videos. Thought I stated I stated this in the comment side of the community side of the channel that it's not it's not, not it's out of my control. I load the videos up in a fast order. Google sometimes shoots the video down for some weird reason, telling me it's a duplicate or um, it could not be loaded, and then I got to go to the, what they call the old system to try to load it. It's 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 random on how it loads up. One video could be short, and it takes longer to load than a longer video. So yeah, you might, and and now at this point, these videos are so backed up that I have that it's sort of taking steps backwards. Here's one for example I did on October 12th. We're way out here at October 25th. But let's um let me start it and then I'm gonna pause then I'm gonna pause it already. We got kind of lucky there. One of the guys that worked there. Uh, um, where is it? Okay, good. This is kind of important to us. This goes to I don't know if it's Michael, one of my great donators, money wise. Thank you, Michael. This is very important. Michael, I think it was Michael or someone else stated. Well, Michael's getting credit now until it, until someone else jumps in. Stated that when I looked at the previous video, I talked about the underside saying that's weird. It looks different ceiling to the one with the panels on it. And they wrote, maybe that's fire retardant you're looking at. And I'm like, wow, that, that's pretty good. And then my brain quickly put that data, that that option in there and ran down the road. What it's what my brain evaluated was that. So I'm not looking at the screen now for you people who think you can read in my mind. I'm looking out the window talking to you. I'm looking at an American flag. Anyway, um, so the uh, I started, it quickly processed and said, okay, if that's fire retardant, that's a panel next to it. Why doesn't that have fire retardant on it? If, it, if the guy spraying fire retardant clearly would have fire retarded that also at the same time. Oh, unless it wasn't up there at the time they were fire retardant. That's weird, but my data runs in my little smart little stupid brain here that can't compiles all this crap and it pops up with, Hey, you know I could prove that statement in a way. They do do this decking, this uh, um, this thing in kind of a staged, staggered, weird way. And it says, go to find the photograph of the roof deck. This is how my brain works. I'm letting you listen into it. It says, go there and says, you can prove that that guy with this fire retardant could, could possibly, tr it could be possible fire retardant. And even if you can't prove it, it's still data that shows you might have a weaker edge so here they pour concrete all the way out here. Look at my mouse here. All the way out to here. And on the other side here is the stockpiling section. It's all the way out to there also. But yet we have some area here that is not poured. So this company just sort of would prove that they're more into accelerating the process of getting this done, 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 done. So much so that they don't even do it consistently across the deck. Hmm. And my debunking of that would be, well, maybe there's an expansion joint they wanted here on purpose, and this is why they stopped there and did that. That would be my own counter to that. I can't imagine that, um, and I can't imagine the thicknesses being different looking over here at this at this elevation here. So I, we do have an uh, data that's out there that says they do they can do something like this. That they can start loading a deck with 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 these dead loads here. And I, I dead live loads, they're not permanent there, so I'm just calling it dead load now. But a live load um, here, it's not permanent. We're permanent somewhere else. But they can load this up. Now let me jump to over here to Michael asking me, um, and he gets special answer because, again, he gave me a nice donation. His answer was about the footprint of the, um, the, uh, uh, the lift. And he started about talking about per square inch and things like that in concrete. Well, concrete 4,000 psi or 6,000 tape, it doesn't matter. Pretty much, and it does matter, but pretty much it's going to fail at 10% of its psi value. So concrete's very strong in compression, let's call it. So let's look at this steel. If I would put, if this was concrete or steel can only take 4,000 psi per square inch. If I were able to uh, put 
400 pounds on top of this, if this could deflect, if it wasn't solid on the bottom, it and theoretically it would create a crack in this member because it has ability to tent for to break in tension. Keep in mind though, it still needs an open span. See the span from here to here? That's an open area. It still needs that. Just because you open up a place one inch below there and you load 400 pounds here does not mean the 400 pounds is going right down straight. It does, it, it, it does not go straight down straight. It would go sort of on a 45. I do this in other videos about other things. It goes on a 45, so it never makes it to that zone, that failure zone. So if you wanted to fail and it was, say, four inches of concrete, let's look at this. Say this is four inches from here down to here. That mouse is stuck there in the video, but right here to here. Let's call it four inches. Let's say right below the 10, you put 400 pounds of pressure on this per in a square inch. It would still zone out like this, you know, 45. So basically, you get a 90 when you're done. That's its zone of influence of that 400 pounds. So you imagine, you don't touch it. 400 pounds, you're not cracking it still. Your distribution is much greater. So you'll still need more. Now, has anyone done testing exactly like that? They have not. It's all theoretical. Nobody's got an exact... Um, four inch, four thousand psi, um, with this mortar mix from this location, and also fiber in it. It's got fiber in it also. They'll tell you, you discount fiber. Fiber is a non; it's a passive system, which means it doesn't work until the cracks happen. Um, it's not active like post tensioning. Rebar is not an active system. That means when you put it in here, the concrete didn't get stronger because rebar's in there. You still got 4,000 PSI. But as it locks and bonds around the concrete and sets up over 28 days, or maybe they have an accelerated process where they're using a concrete that will get 4,000 PSI in three days or four days. But that's not stated in the mix. At least on the drawings, it just says standard concrete, blah, blah, blah. Standard concrete, I didn't, it doesn't even specify state mix or anything. So... I'm going to go out to 28 days, although you might get 4,000 within 10, 7 to 10 to 14 days. Um, you, you're at your, you're at your, and it's still maturing at that point, getting stronger. It's not to say that it can take, and then you start removing the shoring, um, then you can, uh, it can start losing its bond because it didn't have enough. This is a lot of weight. Um, it's 150 pounds per square foot, roughly. That would be about 75 pounds per square surface foot, all the way down to the underside. I discount the steel. I count that as an equal trade-off with the uh, concrete. It's pretty close. Um, rebar. So th this is that what we're talking about. At the point that it starts trying to sag, it can't because the rebar is in there. Now, let's think of you trying to do a, uh, your, your feet on one stool and your head on another stool. You know your back's going to break, right? You, you can't do it. Disgustingly so, what if I put a piece of rebar, I was going to say through you, but forget putting it through you. Let's put it on your back, a piece of steel like this on your, on your back, and I strap you to it all the way down. Now you see you can't deflect. So when they walk on you, now put a load on you, you can't deflect unless you can deflect the steel. Trying to talk, make you understand in layman terms, you can do your own version of that. You can do a piece of paper, if you like, between two spans, and you know obviously you can break the paper. Now I use a piece of rebar or a book, and I strap that book or tape that book, that piece of paper to the book. It now can't deflect. You press on the paper, you also have to make the book fail or the piece of rebar fail. And this is what I'm stating might theorize that because they're stripping these forms down too quick, before the bond is created, of the concrete curing that the it breaks the bond is broken and this is why you can get the deck um, sagging in all these places or it could be the reinforcement and also the uh, decking could be spanning too great of a span no one's been able to confirm with me which exact what they put down here even the steel workers talking to me they nobody has been able to give me the exact 100% saying it's this type of decking so I'm still waiting for that. I keep trolling that for all my steel workers. And when I say trolling, I mean like fishing in this case. I'm not trolling is trying to bait somebody to tell me. I'm asking to tell me. Um, so that version of trolling. Now, back to the back to the video of CDI. CDI, I did a video. You guys are posting that now. I did a video on CDI. On CDI. And I didn't load it. Let's see if it's up here. CDI crane, 
I did that back in October 23rd, and it is the 25th. I don't know if uh, how important it is. It's 3.2 gigabytes and 34 minutes. It's 34 minutes long. But what I will tell you is, know. let's see if I can jump forward, is that if you look at their narrative, their narrative, this is what I basically was saying, that their narrative now fits how the cranes collapsed. Except for, you know that I use psychology in my evaluation of everything because, I, as I tell you guys, you can't call a color red if you think it's blue. So in the report, they cannot present it. I, I Boy, I hate to give away some of my, my tricks because then they'll know this specifically. Now, once I do it, it's done. They now know it. Anybody watching my channel, if they go back this far, they'll now know my strategy of how I present my videos. So I can't, I can't do more than what I'm saying to you. And I present it this way because I know by triggering them, they have no chance, choice but to respond to me. And it's worked. It's worked for me a few times to get me data. So um, I can't actually tell the strategy because if someone sees it, then they could do what I call protect yourself. And if you protect yourself, you can lie if you're trying to protect yourself. The little boy is trying to lie when he eats the cookies. Did you eat the cookies? And shakes his head, no. With a calm little voice, a little girl, whatever, no. And you know there's only you and the kid in the house, and there were four cookies on the table, now there are three. But the kid lies and, and has this guilty feeling about it. That's the contrary thing you need to see. As we look into here, it says per plan on this one. Alpha Crane. Mass was severed at, it shows Alpha and Charlie Crane, they call it. Charlie Crane, Alpha Crane, right? It's Charlie Crane. Alpha Crane was severed at mid-height. So apparently mid-height is what they chose. When I count down six, it, apparently it was mid-height. And fell per plan into the previous damage rock. Okay, per plan. They're trying to say per plan. They wanted to rest on there and fall off. If you remember my video, I stated how, you know, the, the, the live video I did. I said, this thing's going to, I can't visualize it not sliding off the edge of that building. And, uh, and, and it almost did. So going to, uh, and they've never done a crane before. So you, you, you know, that was just junk. My, my theoretical was just as good as their theoretical, except for mine had it landing on a building. Theirs, they were told it's going to fold up and fall down into the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, garbage can area. And then when it didn't, they come up with this narrative. They didn't post this narrative before, and they also say per plan here. This is going to be on the Alpha Crane. On the Charlie Crane or the other crane, when you look at, if you review this, they don't say, watch this. Um, right. Control demolition, right. Um, uh, okay, so cranes permit follow to right. Uh, explosion plan to lower stabilizing the, the tower cranes permit followed on operations. Well, we can pull up their permit and see what it says, but looks Louisiana. They're not letting the public the permit be known, right? CDI's plans call for the counterweight of the Alpha Crane closest to Canal Street to be released. With the explosives to swing inward. I'm going to use the word swing here. Later on, they're going to change to a different word. To fall into the hard rock footprint. Well, it didn't fall into the hard rock footprint. It fell out of it, right? But I stated that it would fall onto that um, where where Dee Dee's brother was down that end. That it would fall on top of that concrete pad. But I visualized it sliding off unless it could punch through it. It did fall off. Uh, the boom would be released and dropped to hook over the oh the one to the right. I'm sorry, that's the one to the right. That's uh, that is Alpha Crane. The boom would be released and dropped to hook to the edge of the uh, roof of the hotel to prevent the rotation of the counterweight. From pulling the upper mass backwards towards the newly renovated, renovated uh, uh, Sanger Theater. The Alpha Crane mass was separate. So look, they're saying they, they did that on purpose. Well, they blew it. If you look at the explosion, they blew them both in the air. There was no timing. Uh, they both t blew it at the same time. If we look at this, they're blown at the same time. So what are they talking about, that timing and all? This is just blown, blown, boom. The, the configuration is different, though. We have uh, a point where it, um, we got a little bit of weight on here, right? But we're configurating different. The configuration is different. They both blow at the same location. I stated in the video they should blow this one up here and then blow this one secondarily again as it rotated around. And this is your wild card. I also stated that you should probably put cabling to this to control its uh, actions. Cable the hell out of this thing. 
and control that it can only go so far. Um, but no cabling was used, and we're moving on. So they're stating that they, they blew these in different order. Clearly, they did not. The boom, 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 and, you know, let's see where it goes. And if that's boom, boom, and this one went this way, this one should have should have gone the same way. So if they blow both these this way, it's out of their control now, especially since they blow, they blow the next section in the same order. So how can you now say that you expected this one to hook there, especially since this was already falling away and then it did a reversal? I did a video on this already, if you guys look at that. And I partially stated here. So they're, they bl they're blown. The weights are, appear to be a little different on these because this has capacity less than this one, I think. I think this one has the more capacity per the permit, uh, per the plans. This one has, uh, one of them has more capacity to lift. I, I, I don't know which one it is. Um, I don't recall. The uh, So they're not the same. They're not the same. This one's got more counterweight or the other one has more counterweight. And therein lies the, the, the formula. Um, I would I would probably think this one had more of the counterweight. I don't, you know, just looking at how it, you get a quicker uh, break, if you will. Oh, no, this is the, uh, it's tied up already. So it hits there, and I talked about equilibrium. You guys, I want to trigger you a little bit. I don't believe in that gravity stuff. Now that Newton couldn't prove it, Einstein doesn't believe it. You know, not that, I'm just using that to triangulate. Um, but this is equilibrium being established. It already started going that way, but we have a counterweight here, this jib. The counterweight is already hooked up or damaged or, or is experiencing serious friction on top of this. And so much so the counterweight's able to pull it back over. But I did in my live video saying this is going to get entangled there. And I don't know if I can find that live video. Let's see if I can. So as I look for that video, I just want to bring it back to here again. Um, that his it's conflict. He's stating that he meant to do it. Really, he meant to do it. If that's the case, well, then that was the intent to never. If that was your intent, as you stayed here to drop it on that building, well, then it was never meant to do anything else because of secondary now removal of uh, of another crane. This means by design, you had no choice now to bring out a crane to remove what you guys said couldn't be done. And and I would argue that it's even more dangerous now. Because they still got to need a man up there to hook onto this thing and then start lifting it. And when they start lifting it, they don't know the loads until they start lifting it. You know, they can try to guesstimate the loads of all the steel, the jib. How do you figure out the counterweight of that? Then you got to figure out the counterweight because they just got rid of the counterweight. So now the jib is the counterweight. They're going to need, what, four cranes? This seems like a toppling accident waiting to happen. My man Connor, who's our crane expert here. He's literally the crane expert here with uh, with uh, permits, etc. He he, I think he would might argue the same thing I'm arguing, and I we would we would fall to his judgment over mine. But um, you can imagine you got to figure out the box. What's the new center of gravity or the axis? You know, you guys call it the center of gravity. What's the new axis of this? What is the new center of gravity for this? Is it down here? Is it here? Is it there? How many cranes are they going to need to lift that up? I can imagine there'll be three cranes out here at least. One heavy one for down this end. Another another one to control it from flipping over onto this one. To probably, probably even literally pull it down. Another crane to pull it down to keep the counterweight down. One in the middle. My gosh, I visualize four cranes here now. You know, or maybe three. Four cranes might be an issue. One, two, three... You know, what do you do? What do you do about this? You know, they're going to need people up there to start securing it, stepping off from a crane basket on here to start tying onto it. Well, hell, you could have did that when it was already up there. All right, so I find this insult ins insult to intelligence to say they meant to do that. That's a joke I say when you uh, fall down. Remember uh, Pee Wee Herman when he was riding on the bicycle and he flipped and fell over and he said, oh, he got up and said, I meant to do that. That's what this reminds me of, their, their narrative. All right, I, that video, I don't know where it is. It, it's the way that way it writes over when I'm uh, doing live videos. It writes over kind of differently. It puts the file over the movie's file, and I, I tr don't need to spend the energy on that right now. If you guys want to have a little fun and, and educate yourself a bit, start looking up things. I had a video ready for you. It's uh, This video is, we're looking at a video screen right now. 
is 10 minutes long. It's dealing, talking about axle forces and to help you figure out what's going on. If we can find the steel, why it's so important to find the steel. You can see what each steel was doing. So think of an axial force, sort of like a 2 by 12 on a deck, your outside deck in your house. And you ever look up underneath your deck and they put that bridging across it, that blocking. And that's because when you load something at the top, it can rotate at the bottom. And this, this is a nice, to the left here where my mouse is, this is a nice detail for shear and axial forces. It's uh, very interesting um, to start to, to maintain it. Now, this is another one over here to the left. So this is a bridge span, and it overloaded, and the twisting again happened in the mid span in this one, at the at the at it, but it's the weakest point. Not without enough blocking, this would be my uh, my armchair fast quick hit hit at you. And what do we have here? Let me scroll over. This is interesting. This one I, I I'm still looking at. This is a tension break, so things clearly just popped away. See it just popped away. Uh, no no deforming. See no deforming of it. No buckling of this. And so this means it was being pulled away and, wow, amazingly so, just fractured right there. Um, and so that's like a tension break. This is your torsion and buckling. So it's got a little combo in there, a little rotation and buckling. This is a very interesting one. I started looking at that. Um, don't understand how it, the loads came on this because I, I don't see any load, load path from up here. They didn't say more how they, they applied this load. This was some type of testing. Um, testing design they were working on so they didn't quite say how they applied that load so I was like oh that's that's uh, that was a waste of my energy so you, you want to start looking for that in the steel let's see if I can back up it's a 10 minute okay this one here so that's that that torsion again so when you start finding things like this in place you go oh look that experience the overloading up of the top that on top of this and it rotate now it could be a, a, a buckling, also, but we don't. We can prove this wasn't buckling. These in, these ends don't come in, right? They're in a abutment here and here. Unless it fell here, it, it was there. It had a torsion that rotated, make it dropping out, and then slide down this wall. Now this wall being closer might have created an extra kink in it, and so you get your first your torsion failure, and then your extra de deformation comes from. Uh, it's sliding down a funnel, if you will. And so you got to keep track of that. How did you get a secondary, or are you looking at secondary um, damage? If this fell from a building. You look at the ends here. If the ends were uh, deformed, then you go, yeah, well, part of that could be buckling when it impact. So you got to try to reverse engineer how that crack or damage was took place. And so here we go again. So this will be uh, where this joint meets. They call this a torsion failure. Um, and how can they say torsion instead of instead of uh, buckling? Um, this one is this is torsion here. This took a torque, um, but this could be it's buckling right here. This would be the weakest point. Look at it. This reinforcement to give it a strong back, that rib, if you will. But when it crosses between these two, cross each other, um, that then becomes a flat piece of metal. So the weakest part of this intersection is where it turns flat without the reinforcing rib. So they're calling this torsion in this image here. Um, I could call it either or because this is still in plane. This is still in plane with this one. This could be torsion or buckling. Um, that's a, you know, this is their narrative. So I don't, I don't see the full rotation on that. Any, I don't see the rotating rotation. Yeah, still don't see it. I try to say it could be there. Um, so now you understand what you look for in that steel. Now we go back to this all ties in. We go back to the overhang of the design of the of the structure, and someone commented that um, there's some loading that they did not build, and I think it's worth commenting that possibly why this came, but they didn't finish building, and with the plans are so erratic. There's so many of them. They, 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 the person's statement was that they didn't build, um, let's get back to that one, that they didn't have the uh, um, the block wall under there. 
That's a thought. If they didn't have the block ball or where, where it failed at or a wall system underneath of it, yeah, that would, can cause some torsion rotation. And their argument is that, or statement is that, it was overloaded with stockpile of materials where I point at the video where it uh, deflects down or starts the thing. They, they're trying to put the moment, the action, reaction happening at the very top. Whereas I have it happening below. So going down that person's path is, is always worth it. It's always worth it to see somebody's path. If you, if you can't see somebody's path, you have what I call a conclusive file. And now you're 100% biased. You can't change your position. You know, we have conclusive files. You know, we have them. The colors that we look at. You know, me, I, I get colors wrong a lot. I call something orange. You say, that, man, that's red. I'm like, oh, okay. I don't own my colors because I can screw those up, believe it or not, when doing all that photography I do. So anyway, um, so I think we should go back on this side and start looking at that wall face. Oh, another person stated that the elevator now becomes a uh, the buck hoist, as uh, some of you uh, uh, people like to call it. But we, we got to talk layman's term, not not contractor term or, or steel layer steel workers terms. So you couple of you guys are saying it's a buck hoist. It's a buck hoist. So anybody who's who part of this video wants to tie it in, they call it a buck hoist. It's an elevator. So um, so the elevator. Um, is now part of the formula of, yeah, the elevator could be a contributing factor now. How is it secured to the building? Hell, was it falling over? You know, did it, did it start pulling? The elevator is a factor that needs to be considered um, what it might, where, where, where was it loading on the building? Keep in mind, though, elevators are supposed to be plumb. So all the load should just transfer right on down to the foundation, and it should be no problems. So I, you know, depending on, I, I don't see the elevator being out of plumb, but you know, hey, maybe somebody put this something crazy and rode something in the elevator, and I just can't see it having the reaction. If it was at the very top, the, the man lift, the elevator, if it was at the very top, then I could see it having some torque action. But it's at the bottom, it's got the least amount of reaction. It's just steel, um, you know, anchoring onto the building. Even at a plumb, I don't see it having that ability to pull this thing apart. So that's my take on uh, the buck hoist elevator man lift. I'm going to terminate this video because I've got to get back to work. I think I'll load it up. I won't know until I, until I finish doing what I'm doing. It's the way I feel like think. There it is over there. Looks like sausages, doesn't it? It's corrosion um, um, thing I'm working on, a corrosion paper. It's corrosion is something else. It's a uh, metal corrosion. Um, uh, it's its own science. All right. Bye. As far as I'm concerned.